Hello everyone, welcome to another video. In this one we're going to be doing some post-processing in Lightroom and Photoshop and the subject is going to be black and white landscapes. So this is the final image that we're working towards. This was taken in the Peak District earlier in the year and I did a video on that uh, which I'll link up top now. And if you look on screen we've got the original image in Lightroom now. So the first thing to note is this is not black and white yet, we're going to change that in a little while. Um, the other thing is we've got some blemishes up in the sky there. You'll remember if you did watch that video uh, that I, on the day on my sensor I had some little specks of dust which I'd not noticed and they were just causing these blemishes in the sky. So we'll get rid of those in Photoshop later. But just to start with we're going to go to the black and white settings here. If we click on black and white that gives us a good starting point and we can also click auto in the tone settings just to give us a base to work from. And now we're going to tweak some of the tone settings. So I'm going to increase the exposure just a bit. Now this is blowing out the sky um, but we're going to fix that later with some localized uh, filters for the sky. And one thing I've forgotten to do is just crop this. So I'm going to go up to the crop tool here and do that now. I'm just going to bring down this a bit um, around about that, like that I think. Um, so we'll continue with the tone settings now. The shadows, I think they're more or less okay. Um, bring it to about there. Whites, I think they're okay. Um, blacks. Um, they were more or less okay, I think, about there. And now we're going to go down to the black and white mix settings. So if you're working in colour, you're going to have hue, saturation, luminance settings. But when you're in black and white, you've got the black and white mix settings. And what each of these sliders do is basically just increase the uh, dark or light values of each colour that's in the image. So if we look at the original image, you've got the greens down there in the fields. The mountains in the background, are, we've got more of a blue hue. So if I change the, the green slider, it's going to affect the fields, and the blue one is going to affect the mountains. So I usually start with auto, just gives us a good base to start from. I don't think there's much red to worry about in the image, so I'm going to leave that orange, I'm not sure. Um, it's more or less okay, I think. Now yellow, that is going to affect the fields, uh, and so is green. Uh, I'm going to adjust the green first, uh, probably about there, and then the yellow, bring that down to about there. Um, the aqua, that's affecting shadows, uh, you'll see down here, the shadows of the trees, uh, they get darker if I decrease the aqua uh, slider. So I'm going to bring that to about there, and Similarly, I'm going to bring the blue slider down just to darken those mountains up at the back. And purple and magenta, we can leave those. Now at this stage, I would usually tweak the presence settings, so dehaze, clarity and texture. Um, dehaze, you can get these really strong saturation and uh, contrast effects. Looks a little bit like an Ansel Adams image, if I dare say so, <laughs> when you do that. Um, and yeah, clarity will increase some sharpness and same with texture. But I'm not going to work with those on the whole image. What I'm going to do instead is work locally in different areas using some of the filters. So I'm going to start off with the graduated filter tool up here. And I'm just going to bring that down from the, the, the top of the, well, just below the top of the sky, um, just down to about there and you'll see the red area is the the area that that's going to affect so I'm going to leave the exposure shadows I'm going to bring those down maybe about there let's just see what we're doing the blacks I'm going to bring those down not a lot just a little bit 
and now what I'm really going to do is bump up the dehaze and you'll see that brings a lot of darkness back into the sky area and the top of the mountains there um, and I might just compensate by bringing the exposure up just a tiny tiny bit okay that's it for that one and what I'm actually going to do is add a second one just to really increase the darkness in that top sky bit so in that one I'm going to bring down the exposure to about there uh, we'll put the dehaze up just a little bit and because that's getting a bit noisy now because I'm increasing all the, the values it's adding noise to the image so I'm just going to bring up the noise slider and that will actually decrease the noise. I know I'm going upwards, it's a bit counterintuitive. The, the higher you go with that, the less noise you have. Okay, so that's darkened my sky area. And now what I'm going to do is adjust the bottom area of the picture using the same tool, the graduated filter. But this time I'm going to go from the bottom of the image and come up. Maybe to about there. And with this one, I'm going to bring the exposure up a little bit because I want to brighten the bottom of that image there. And then the texture and clarity, I'm going to bring those up because I want to increase the kind of sharpness of that bottom area. So I'm going to come up to about 9 with the texture. Clarity, I don't want too much. I'm trying to be subtle. And I'll also use the dehaze a little bit. about there okay so we're starting to get there a little bit now now what I haven't done yet is tweak the temperature or tint so I'm just going to play around with that until I get something that I quite like just a little bit maybe about there and I'll bring down the tint Maybe to about there. So now I'm I'm feeling fairly happy with that, but what I want to do is really soften out some of this misty area, make it even more misty and soft, and maybe just increase a little bit of that uh, the the brightness of that smoke coming out of the chimney. So I'm going to do that by using this tool up here, which is the adjustment brush. And with this, I can just paint areas. If I press O on my keyboard, that will show the areas that I'm affecting. And I can just paint that over this area, just like that. And now what I'm going to do is just bring down the texture of that because it's misty and soft, it doesn't need texture, and the clarity as well. And I might just bring down the dehaze a little bit as well. Not a lot, just a little bit. Maybe about that. Okay, and then with the chimney smoke, if we zoom in on that, Around about two to one, we can just use the brush again to go over that smoke area like that. And then, what I'm going to do with that one is put the exposure up a little bit, maybe to about there. The highlights will come up quite a lot with that. And the whites as well. Let's come up quite a lot with the whites. Let's really increase the smoke there. And I think I just want to adjust the actual factory 
building as well. So um, we use the range mask with luminance. Around about there, I think. And for that one, I'm going to increase contrast a little bit. And I'm going to bring the shadows down, the blacks down, and I'm going to bring D haze up just a touch. Okay, so I think we're ready to bring it into Photoshop now. If you hit Command and E, or Control and E, if you're using a PC on your keyboard, that'll think about it for just a little moment and it'll bring that into Photoshop for you so what I'm going to do here is just get rid of these blemishes so we've got one here and one here I'm just going to use the patch tool which is here or press J on your keyboard just draw around that drag it to the side and that's it same with that one easy and I might just do some overall level adjustments by going to the adjustment panel over here clicking on the levels and then just bringing that slider up there a little bit I'm just going to bring it to the end of the histogram there I don't want to go too far because it's going to start overexposing things go just to the end of the histogram there that's just enough brightness so you can see what that's doing there just brightening it up slightly, giving it a little bit more pop. And hit save. It's quite a large image, so it's going to just take a little time. We go back to Lightroom. And I think I'm just going to crop off that little top bit, because that top white bit there is just a little bit distracting. So I'm just going to bring that down a touch. And there we are. Final image. So I quite like this image when I got it on the day, but I didn't like it as much as some of my other images. And that's because most of my other images were shot into the sun and I had these really rich sunrise colours with the yellows and oranges. And this one was taken to the side with the sun at a 90 degree angle. And that gave it some really nice light. It's got some really nice shadows coming from the trees and you know the low morning golden hour light. But it didn't have the colours of the, the other ones with the sunrise and the yellow and orange colours coming through. So I decided to make it black and white and I think it's worked really well in the end. It's, um, yeah, all the subject of the image is really nice. You've got uh, the really wide open expanse. It looks really epic and big. You've got the factory there with the smoke coming out and you've got that really nice haze, the, the misty fog. So it all worked really nice but it just needed the black and white element to just really kick it off I think for that image so why not have a go with your own if you've got some landscapes that are not quite working sometimes just making them black and white can can just give it the lift that it needs uh, and I hope that the tips and tools that I've showed you today uh, will help you do that if you like the video please give it a like and uh, if you haven't yet subscribed then hit the button down here to subscribe and uh, yeah that's it for now I hope you'll tune in for the next video and uh, as always, thanks for watching and bye for now.